Life on Mars? Maybe not. New research from the U.S. Geological Survey has found that the mysterious streaks once thought to be proof of water on Mars are probably just sand flows. Sorry, NASA. Recurring slope lineae, or RSL, are long, dark streaks that expand on the slopes of Mars during warmer seasons and retract when the temperature gets colder. RSL looked similar to features on Earth formed by water flows and contained hydrated salts that help water stay liquid. But a closer look reveals behavior that's unlike flowing water. Streaks existed only on the tops of steep slopes and all settled at an angle of repose, the maximum slope at which loose solid material can be piled without slumping. Researchers concluded that the markings weren't created by water, but by dry grains like sand and dust that accumulate and flow down the slopes. The RSL may still contain water, but probably not enough to sustain tiny microbial critters, let alone human life. Keep watching to see more of Mars. Astronauts might one day hibernate their way to Mars. Getting to Mars from Earth takes a long time, as long as 200 days. A group of scientists funded by NASA think astronauts could pass most of that time by hibernating in a sleep chamber, much like what you see here. Each chamber is outfitted with tubes that lower the body's temperature as well as provide nutrition. An intranasal cooling system would lower the astronaut's temperature by 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which significantly reduces metabolism. The astronaut is fed via catheters attached to the thigh or chest, while another tube carries waste away. This result is what's called a torpor-induced state, using therapeutic hypothermia. One concern is muscle atrophy due to lack of use. Scientists think they can address this through neuromuscular electrical stimulation. As the astronauts approach Mars, the wake-up cycle begins. Warming pads slowly raise the body's temperature. It takes roughly one hour for every one degree rise in body temperature. Fully awake after their long nap, the astronauts are ready to begin their Mars mission. China's concept Martian forest city. Matt Damon sure could have used one of these concept Mars homes in 2015's The Martian. The concept from the Chinese space agency, Tongji University, and Stefano Boeri Architects would see a spaceship ferry a colony of massive pods containing forest cities from Earth toward Mars. Once the pods have touched down on the red planet, in Habitat reports, they would use ecosystemic seeds to take root. This colony of forest city giant pods, dubbed New Shanghai, would also reportedly contain an infrastructure and an Earth-like atmosphere. Would you like to live in New Shanghai? Nonprofit group plans permanent Mars colony. The race to Mars has begun. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk says the company will send people to Mars by 2024 and he will reveal plans for colonization in September. Meanwhile, a nonprofit group also aims to establish permanent Mars colonies, sending the first group of astronauts by 2026. After Earth, Mars is the most habitable planet in our solar system. It has similar natural resources, a temperate climate, and an adaptable gravitational pull on its surface. Nonprofit foundation Mars One has developed a plan to colonize Mars. It has already selected six teams of four individuals, and the first team will begin training next year. In 2020, Mars One will launch a communications satellite to the Red Planet. Between 2022 and 2025, a series of rovers will land and assemble livable habitats, which include a life support unit and a communication system. The living unit will house an inflatable living section and an airlock used by astronauts when leaving the sealed, habitable settlement. The unit will include materials for the construction of rooms, floors and electrical outlets and comes equipped with showers and kitchen areas. Additional units will arrive and be constructed as new teams join the colony. Attached to the living unit is the environmental control and life support system. The system will feed nitrogen and argon gas extracted from Mars's atmosphere into the habitable space as inert gases. Thin, film solar photovoltaic panels will be included to generate electricity. The life support system will be equipped with heating units to boil and extract water from ice in the planet's soil. Once the astronauts have landed, it will also be in charge of water purification and removal of carbon dioxide from the living unit atmosphere. 
The colony's communication system will include two orbiting satellites, one around Mars and one around the Sun. The satellite orbiting Mars will only be interrupted when Mars is positioned between it and Earth. To counter the lapse, the second satellite orbiting the Sun will intercept and relay the transmission, allowing almost 24-7 communication with Earth. The colony will lose transmission only when the Sun is between Mars and Earth, and Mars is between its satellite and Earth simultaneously. Mars One will launch a team of four members every two years, starting in 2026. It will take a year after departing Earth for a team to land on the surface of Mars. The organization hopes to train and send new teams, even after the initial six have colonized the planet. TV show gives a glimpse of life on Mars. The first home designed for humans to live in on Mars will be unveiled at an exhibition in the UK on November 10th. The exhibition of the show home ties in with a National Geographic docudrama that imagines colonists from Earth living on the red planet. The house would be constructed with Martian soil. The soil would be microwaved until it forms a brick. The bricks would be used to build the walls of an igloo-shaped dome, which would be around 10 feet thick. Recycled spacecraft parts, including a double airlocked entrance, would be used as the front door. Experts believe the dome would be able to withstand the Martian environment, including extremely low temperatures, micro-meteorite impacts, a thin atmosphere, and cosmic radiation. An underground area would contain facilities such as a dining hall and laboratory. The colony would expand module by module until it forms a city, termed Olympus Town. The exhibition at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London coincides with the launch of the six-part docudrama Mars, which tells the story of an attempt to colonize Mars in the year 2033. Martian atmosphere could be used to make oxygen and rocket fuel. Mars may one day be able to sustain a human outpost with the help from the planet's own environment. 96% of the Martian atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide, Researchers believe this abundant resource, combined with the cold Martian temperature and non-thermal plasma, can produce oxygen and carbon monoxide. Local production of these gases on Mars could, in theory, help sustain an outpost or even colony on the red planet with oxygen and help with the deeper exploration of the solar system using carbon monoxide as fuel. But that being said, it's all speculation for the moment. So it looks like we won't be joining Matt Damon anytime soon.